Must time have a beginning? Must it have an end? Could it have one without the other? Let's consider. Hello philosophers, I'm Chico. Welcome to The Philosopher's Show, where we consider the greatest questions of human history. Now this is a question that has incredible implications for philosophy of religion and philosophy of life. It's important for some religions that the universe does have a beginning or does have an end, or maybe both. And it's important for other religions and some anti-religious beliefs, like atheism, that it doesn't have a beginning or possibly doesn't have an end. Now our universe's existence is not necessarily identical to the existence of time. But if time is not infinite, then for sure our universe is not infinite. And if time is infinite, then we at least have the possibility that our universe is infinite. So what must it be? To some philosophers, it seems like time must be infinite. After all, imagine getting to a point in time and saying, that's the last one. We can't add any more moments. That seems pretty arbitrary, right? It seems like you would always add another moment. It seems like to other philosophers that time must be finite. You can't actually traverse an infinite. You can't go one, two, three, four, blah, 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 infinity. What's the number right before infinity? There is no number. Infinity isn't something that you can get to in a succession. Further, you have the paradoxes of the actual infinite. And if you don't remember what those were, check out my infinity playlist. An interesting thing to know, it seems like that we're more comfortable with admitting a possibly infinite future than an infinite past. Now, why is that? Well, the past has already happened and the future hasn't. To say that the past is infinite is to say that there have been an unlimited number of moments that have elapsed. But this really seems like to collect the unlimited number of moments and put them in a, a limited place the past. And that seems paradoxical. Further, imagine that collection. Add a moment to it in which something happens. Say, like a philosopher comes into existence and goes out of existence. Hasn't that added something new? Well, if the past is infinite, then no, it hasn't. Infinity plus one is still just infinity. But then it seems like the past is always being added to, right? The present moment is always going into the past. And it seems like that should make a difference, right? Now, to say the future is infinite is to say something more like you can always add one to the future. There's always one extra day that you can add on to it. Now, this sounds a lot like Aristotle's distinction between the potential and the actual infinite. An actual infinity would be an endless collection that is actually on a limited thing. An unending with an end, which would be this infinite past. The potential infinite would be something that you could always add to that was never completed, which sounds a lot like the future. For those reasons, it seems like we can't have an infinite past and we can have an infinite future, but by infinite future, we just mean a future that never actually ends. It is always coming into being never complete. Now, if you were a philosopher, you may have noticed that I have assumed a specific theory of time. There are other theories available, and I'm looking forward to getting to those eventually. But one objection that you could have to this, and it's one that Aristotle believes, is that the past doesn't actually exist. So it's not like there is an actual infinite collection back there. There's nothing back there. However, I think a strong response to that would be, imagine a person that's existed for all those moments of time, a past infinite, and every moment that person has a memory of. Well, that would be an infinite number number of memories, and so that would be an actual infinite collection. So it seems like even though the past doesn't exist, an infinite number of moments would lead to an actual infinity. By the way, if you're wondering if that's a problem for the existence of God, somebody having an actual infinite series of memories, there are theories of God's knowledge that don't succumb to this kind of a paradox. But we'll save those for philosophy of religion. If you have questions about the infinity of time, please let me know in the comments. That's all I got for today. Adios.